Hello again everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to see you again. Today we're going to be doing something different. We're not going to be playing any music, but instead we're going to make it a little bit more technical and concentrate on one particular aspect of tape recording, which makes me sometimes unhappy. The reason we are here is because we love audio tape. And there, is a, there are a lot of good reasons for that. You can love the tape simply for the spinning reels, or you can enjoy the sound quality it produces, or just about anything in between. The pride of ownership of a particular machine, the beauty of that machine, and so on. And if you are like me, every purchase of quote-unquote master tape is a big event. There is no question that today low generation copies of master tapes is probably one of the best medium available for the sound reproduction. Some people even go as far as saying it is definitely the best medium. But be it as it may, it is definitely up there. So it makes it even more unfortunate when after spending a significant amount of money, you receive the tape and it just doesn't sound right. We all know that expectation that we experience when opening the box and when the tape sounds wrong, you are so upset. It's not just the, the money, it's the whole process, the whole situation. I've been in this situation myself. Not so long ago, I bought one tape from a very respected producer and it didn't sound right. When looking at the numbers, looking at the volume control position and uh, oscilloscope and meters, it became obvious the tape was recorded at very, very, very high level and it was simply pushing itself into compression. You know, the tape compresses and limits in a very soft way and that's what a lot of people like. But there is also such a thing as going overboard. You see, minor compression and softening here is okay, but when you start getting into this area, it becomes very, very obvious. And today we're going to look at that situation. As you might remember, I recently obtained this McCurdy peak meter, which allows me to, look, to take another look, very good look, into the situation with peaks and averages. And that's, we go, that's what we're going to be using today in our study. So we're going to be using this calibration tape. And the first tone on this tape is 400 Hz, recorded at 320 nanowebers. Now, that's a pretty high level. It's already about 5 dB above the standard level of 185 nanowebers. And we're going to be looking at McCurdy meter and also my digital scope. So let's start the tape and see what kind of calibration we get. As you can see, the meters are perfectly calibrated. The VU meter needles are perfectly sitting at zero, and PPM meters are positioned in the middle of the scale, which is also the middle point or zero point. Let's rewind the tape a little bit and look again at the scope. If you look at the scope screen, you will see this diagonal line which represents both channels. The vertical axis being white, second channel, and the horizontal being the channel 1. 
So you can see this cursor shows the magnitude of this signal. And if signal jumps outside of that window, we're going to be able to see it. So let us watch the scope display first. You can see some activity between the two channels, but so far it's staying within the box. You can see some brief excursions outside the box, but they're not great. You just saw one that jumps to about two sides the box size. But it's going to get bigger. It is fun sometimes to watch this activity because it tells you about a lot about the way the sound is mixed for this particular tape. If it's when you, you play in mono recording, you pretty much get just a diagonal line. And the more the picture deviates from a simple line, the more activity happens on the sound stage. You see already some very large excursions, especially in horizontal dimension. It's hard to tell from the oscilloscope screen how big they are, but looks like they may be two to even three times the size of the box. And the really big ones are still coming. Lots of big ones, huge, huge excursions. Probably three, four times the size of the box. Wow. Like I said, the box is already big enough for the plus six tape and we are jumping way outside of that window now we're going to rewind the tape and watch it on the mccurdy wow those are huge excursions we're going to watch it next on the mccurdy's peak meters and now we're going to play it again and watch it on the mccurdy meters I advise you to look mostly on the right channel because that's where the most activity is going to be happening. Remember, as I mentioned to you before, this point on scale represents 14 dB you see huge excursion now, especially for the VU meter jumping like crazy. And on occasions you will see this needle hitting the 14 dB stop. And that's a deviation from already plus 5 dB point, which is in the middle. So when the needle hits the end of the scale, that's 19 dB over the reference level of 185 nanowebers. This is a very, very, very high level. And especially you see a lot of activity in VU meter. It tries to go into red zone. It does sometimes. So overall, this is not a pretty picture. That's what the overloaded tape looks like. Look at that excursion, look at that PPM meter on the right. Oh, 
Okay, I think we got the picture. Wow, that VU meter is going totally crazy. And now let's go back to this chart that we've seen before. You see it's got some scribbles on it. So basically, here you have this 19 dB point. This is the point at which the right meter needle hit its stop. 19 dB is above the reference level. Now look at the corresponding curve. This is what the tape retains from the magnetic field applied to it. And you can see initially it follows the line precisely, then it starts deviating. And as long as you are staying in this zone with maybe some rare excursions, you're talking about very minor compression here. And that's fine. You're not going to notice it much, especially if your peaks are very, very brief in nature. But things happen differently when you have most activity in this area, as we just seen on the VU meter. The right VU meter was really moving like crazy in this area. And plus on top of that, there were some peaks. And if you follow this area up, you will see this big deviation from original magnetization curve. So you're already very deep into the compression region. You are on, on the almost flat area of the curve. And this is why this particular tape will sound so compressed and overloaded. Now, it goes without saying that there are many other aspects to recording quality that we're not covering today. There are many, many different attributes of uh, tape recording that you have to get just right in order to produce good sounds in tape. But this one is a very important one because you notice it right away. As soon as large peaks hit your ears, you know the sound compressed. And that's very unpleasant effect. What can you do about it? Unfortunately, nothing you can do to the tape. You, can, you cannot simply play it at lower level and hope that compression will disappear. It will not. It will stay there. And the reason for this much recording in the first place was to avoid the noise of the tape, to record way above that noise, to maintain signal-to-noise ratio. But what we know, today's tapes are much better than the tapes of uh, many years ago. So you don't need to do it anymore. You can record at moderate levels, avoid the compression, and still have very respectable signal-to-noise ratio. So your tape would still sound lively and nice with a lot of air, but it will not have compression. To be fair to those producers, most of their tapes are like that. The wonderful sounding tapes, many of them. Some are simply in my reference category. But it happens sometimes, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure what happened. Maybe during the duplication process, something went wrong. So in some cases, you can probably bring up your concern to the producer and they may be able to refund your money or give you replacement tape. It's kind of difficult for an average person to conduct the study we've just done using peak meters and oscilloscope. Of course, I understand. So you have to trust your ears. And your volume control setting will tell you a lot about recording level. Especially true if you're expecting music with very wide dynamic range. You will notice the compression right away. On some pop music, dynamic range is very narrow, so it may not matter very much. But on acoustically recorded classical music or small jazz, 
it's going to be immediately obvious. So this is just give you some idea about one particular aspect of recording. So you would be more ready to look and understand what's happening and whether the recording is of suitable quality. Let me know if you have other questions. So we can talk about more specifics here, but that in a nutshell is what's happening. Too much recording level is not good and moderation gets you better quality. And with this, we're going to close the today's session. I hope to see you again. And let me know if you have any concerns or questions. And by the way, I know that sometimes people put dislikes on the videos. I don't have any problem with that. But it would be nicer if instead of or in addition, you would make a comment. If you don't like something, please let me know. It may be something I would be able to correct. Okay? So see you next time. And please stay well. Goodbye.